built by slaves, brick by brick. And it's been standing all these years. And it says, it's, it's, it's blessings all in that building, man. And demons will come in there and try to stir the service and everything all the time. All the time. Yeah. You know? But so I took this girl there. She, cause she said she wanted to get a life. And I saw the, the minister outside, and another minister was with her. I said, look, we need to pray over this girl. So all three of us prayed over her. And then one of the guys that prayed over, he had never met me before. He said, you are a mighty man of God. And when I left, when we left the church, man, this girl did some fentanyl, and she almost died. And I believe that if those prayers hadn't been put up before that, she probably would have. Right. You know? Uh, but it's amazing how God's work, man. Yeah. But if they open, man... I need did she heal from the demonic stuff or she, is she doing she better she got better good i mean it's been like three or four it's a girls. process it's, eh? it's been like three or four girls who have come to me seeking help and all of them got better hallelujah you know that's what now it's one about. of them got she got so good i couldn't believe it and now yeah. she, have, she have fell off again Oh. But every time she sees me, she says, yeah. I love you so much. Yeah. And I do something to try to help her. You know, yeah. sometimes people can change and they want to change, but they're not ready yet. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Just like people get married and they're not ready yet. Absolutely. You know, Ooh, you, that's a great example. You have example. to know yourself before you can uh, know somebody oh, brother, else. Yeah. And yeah. the fentanyl, man, I've seen so many couples break up because if you're on fentanyl and your girl is on fentanyl, Fentanyl is your first love. Wow. Your girl is not. If you, if you and her And together, it's so you, disgusting. Right, it smells like together, burnt rubber. If you and her together and got fentanyl, then everything fine. But if you ain't got none, she not your first love. <gasps> that is. Oh. Man, it's more boosted and shoplifting in stores, the yeah. dollar store. Absolutely. And the Walmart and Target, You can see it. They have even put people in the uh, parking lot under covers to catch people because it's so mad. Yeah. So many every day because people they support they want to support that demon they want to support that. But who's the one making that thing? Man, or how what 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 good is it as a as a as a drug? Well, well it's supposed it's it's a pain. Pharmaceutically, it's a pain. Pain? It's, yeah. a pain. it's for pain. It's right. a pain. But it's, it's stronger than hair. So people take and I don't get it how people they do it and they fall asleep. Yeah. And they fall asleep and a lot of girls wake up naked. Some of them. They, the pocketbook and everything is gone, and and you know, and, and then they, I, I wouldn't want to do nothing to put me asleep, and I'm not, I'm not aware of what's going on Absolutely, around. Absolutely, yeah. Even when you even when you do really sleep regularly, to have all your stuff stolen. Right, and they keep doing it over and over again. I even sleep guys, with one eye open. Even guys are sucking guys' dicks to get wow. fed fed now. So. Yeah. Last year in the United States, a hundred thousand people were dead. Wow. Around the world, it was billions. Okay. okay. And it's this company that was making it and pushing it and selling these different places. So yeah. they offered them five point some million, uh, uh, trillion billion dollars to close the shop down. Then they increased it to six. So. All they gonna do is close the shop down and then move it somewhere else. Cause there's too much money involved. Even, even you know what I'm saying? Even even Heron, they asked that guy to close it down, and he they offered him a price. He said the, the money that they offered him was pennies compared to what he get. So they said, well, if you don't close it down, we just gonna come through with helicopters and burn it up. He said, before you do that, uh, let me give you a list of all the people in the White House who uh, invested. Yeah. And then they shut it up. They didn't say nothing else. You know, they, you know, they, you know, they, 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 they pushing drugs and they, yeah. Okay, a guy could have thirty pounds of cocaine. Yeah. This is gonna and, lead me to a question. And though. get Go probation. Ahead. Yeah. Okay. Right. If, if it's powder, if, and get probation, and a guy could have four or five rocks and get five or six years in prison. So it's like protecting the rich. Sure. <laughs> And it's, condemning the poor. Oh, yeah. Well, here's my other question. And I want to see if I can... Uh, would you mind being... Like I told you before, I'm documenting the 
pilgrimage, but for good. Like the, the thing is, you don't get this footage. You can't. I can't get this footage that is so great. But like I told you, I have this two voices in my head. One saying, "Ask if you can record it. Go ahead." Okay. Uh, I don't mind. You don't mind being on video. As long as I change hands. <laughs> That's a cool hat, man. You look great, actually. Yeah, I don't want no hip hop ass. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. Oh man, what a glorious thing. This was literally a five minute, five minute and 30 second conversation that we just had. And it's worth it. Now, I don't always have my against fentanyl. <laughs> Yahuwah, Yahusha, and Rea are against fentanyl. <laughs> That's you what know, I should people, be having on yeah, here. People been OD'ing okay. like crazy. This is my Casper, everybody. And right. he is uh, in white. And we have been praying. This is a, a, an experience. I was just telling him that I have two voices in my head. One one telling me, man, you want to capture that on footage to show everybody, to put it out there, right? But then there's another side of me, the, the holy side of me that says, this is the message I've been praying for. This man, and you just heard it, he's a healer, and he has, the, and I was asking for that, I told you, right, before you even told me what you just told me, we've just been a revelation, just like completely, uh, it's divine revelation, that's what I would call this, right? Right. You know, man, uh, and sex can be healing, and the, oh, absolutely. the, the, the Jewish yes. people teach this, right? Now... Uh, somebody could have sex with somebody and the person they have sex with have demons in them. Yes, that too. And it, <laughs> you, having sex with that person, the demon can come into Absolutely. you. Absolutely. But if your spirit is stronger, yeah. you can take the demon out of somebody. You know, your strong spirit can take the demon out of somebody. And people, sometimes people come to you, they want to be healed in all type of ways. Yes. And they want to connect with you because they see power in you. And they think that that power, some of that power getting them, it will help them. And it does. And it does. Right. And I, I agree. I agree. It's just, uh, it's all part of it. And, uh, and well, like I was saying, is, is that a picture? <laughs> oh, a picture. Oh, hallelujah. Okay. What is your name? Complete Sh name? Shamosh Yahuda Peretz. And the thing is that I, I actually, like I said, I don't really show my face because I'm offering it. I have all that information. But of course, it's a little reading. But I, something just felt like I, I needed to talk to you for some reason. I needed to give you my telephone number. Honestly. Yeah, I was just like, what? And again, what? Uh, it's like an answered prayer. He, he's been answering it since yesterday, the Father, because I've been feeling like it's hard out here. But then I got the revelation is like, look, the Messiah walked like this, he could have done anything. But you, we do have the power. That power is that love that we have that people come to us. You know what I mean? I was like, what else do you want? You got like a magnet. You're like a magnetic power. But yeah, the also the bad ones, you changing, you're doing things even without saying a word. And people are just, like I'm telling you at that uh, shelter, they're just like, we don't know. He's cool, but we don't know what he's about. You know, and they don't want to talk either. And I've noticed that. Californians are really short of words. They only like tell you one thing and they don't want to hear nothing no more. They've let been deceived for so long. Let me share a story with you. Absolutely. My father was a violent alcoholic. Well, my mother was straight up church. She kept all the kids mm. in church. Sounds familiar. <laughs> and then my grandmother died and she was oh. a missionary in the Catholic church. So she oh, had a wow. funeral man. It, it was packed with white people. I'm seven years old, had never seen that many white people in a gathering in my life. And all of these, they had the, these young guys that were singing in the choir like they did in the old days. Beautiful. And the priest shaking, man, the most beautiful funeral I ever seen in my life. And so shortly after that, my sister, who was a really strong Christian in Palmdale, my grandmother visited her in the bed where she was before she died. And an angel, one night I was sleeping and I could feel something. And I woke up and I shook and it was an angel sitting on my bed and said, fear not. Because of your father and the prayers of your grandmother, God has assigned me to watch over you all the days of your life. I said, will you come back? I don't, it's not necessary for me to come back. I will be there. I've had 
guns, bullets fly by my head. I was in a car in Long Beach and this girl was coming toward me so fast, I closed my eyes and said, oh my God, and something turned that car away from me and it was no accident. That girl followed me three different places looking at me like, who are you and what just happened? And it was the power of God, man. That's why I got a tag in my car that says, Jesus is my driver. Hallelujah. Jesus is my driver. And man, you know, I, I've seen miracles, man. I've seen all type of things happen, man. Absolutely. All that's written in the word of God. Hallelujah. And when I looked into my friend's car, she had a pink Bible, very beautiful Bible. I've never seen one like it before in my life. But I want to ask her about it when she come back. And, uh, uh. I wanna, I wanna, let me, uh, let me, let me tell you something. And the people. And oh, the Hebrew the Israelites? Yes. Sometimes, they're they here? Yeah, sometimes they be on this corner, they be different places, and they be out there and they minister to people. Right. And try to direct. They and do not like white people, though. See, I think, <laughs> I think their ministry now is they pick places where they know it's a lot of drug traffic. Over here at this service station here, man, so many people have OD'd there recently. And so many people, they had to call paramedics and they went uh, to the hospital and then they get out and continue to do the same thing. And man, it's, this, this drug is so strong, it's changing the whole world. Yeah. And it was probably like the crack epidemic. Right. When it first like, started, like, you know, ooh, like, that was crazy. Like, God made cocaine, God made marijuana, all to be used for a purpose in, in right. moderation. Yeah. But Christian man, made by man. Yeah, made and it's man. just lethal. Right. It's so addictive, I tell you, just don't do it. I always tell people, man, why can't, you can't just stick to marijuana? Like, is it that hard? Actually, that was my question. Marijuana you know? and wine. That's all you know what I'm saying? That's enough. I tell absolutely I tell them dude it's a healing it's a healing thing, but you must do it in moderation, like a medicine. It's right. a medication. Like, like James like, say, uh in the book of James said moderation is the key. Absolutely. When I was a kid, my brother used to come and visit me and my mother. And every time he left, he would say something to me. Five words. One time he said, Stay away from the dogs. I didn't even understand it. It was a Christian lady living across the street. I look and I say, my brother said something to me when he left and I don't understand it. Could you explain it to me? He said, stay away from dogs. She said, look up. She said, you see those people across the street? And that was the answer that I needed to hear to understand. But something else he said to me was. <laughs> who, who was it? Who the was people it? and the way they live. Oh, yeah. And you know. The dogs. Right, you know nasty and the things they Absolutely. did and stuff, you know. Absolutely. And, you know, and it, it's terrible, the house and everything. It's, that's why I don't like talk. Do that's why I don't talk. That's why I don't talk. I mean, yeah. the one who's going to talk to me, the father's going to send. And also, my brother said, moderation is the key. Uh -huh. And he pr said that to me because my father was an alcoholic, and I had a brother that died at an early age, 40s, from alcohol. Wow. So he was giving me a message. So I left and I went to Florida. And I stayed there for like 15 years and then coming back and forth to California, I decided to move out here to be closer to my family and whatnot. Coast and so to coast. When I went straight to my brother's apartment and time I got there, he smiled and he said, boy, how did you make it? I say, I stayed away from the dogs. And moderation was, was the key. key. Hallelujah. <laughs> I stayed away from the dogs. What he had instructed me to this do. This is the kind of uh, ministry we've been having here. Do. It's been wonderful all morning. He's answered prayers. I can't say enough. Look, I'm not even have my face covered. That, that's how holy this man has been to me. Trust me, since we started, I just asked, can I record you? I have to ask. You see, that's why I don't want because it breaks this thing and it breaks this. That's why I was like, I wanted to keep quiet first and it's just an answer prayer. Casper, everybody. <laughs> you have to listen to everything. Sometimes you could be walking and the kid might say something and the message is for you. God can send him. I've seen people, In any way. I have seen. <laughs> He's so my perfect. Mother, my mother died. I was in Florida. She was in Tennessee. 
And I was walking down the street one day, and this person who people would assume was crazy said, it's all your fault. If you had been there with your mother, the Fords would not have her. The Fords is a funeral parlor. This person knows nothing about me mm -hmm. and telling me this, but it wasn't telling me this in a good way. It was telling me this because it wanted me to do something to hurt myself, to feel sorry mm -hmm. and feel like it was my fault. Right. But it wasn't. But to know the funeral parlor and that my mother had died, there's no way in the world somebody could know things like that and you don't even know them unless the spirit has put it in them to say something to you. Nice. So when I walk, I listen. Yeah. I listen to kids because sometimes they are your teachers. Absolutely. I'm listening to people who they say crazy. People. We're in touch with a parallel world <laughs> right. from with this one at the same time. We're like connected. We're the ground. Our feet are the ground and our mind is like the frequency, the positive and the negative. You know, the negative is down on the ground. And then we're like frequencies with the spiritual world. It, we don't, you need discipline to get here. It, it guides, it, it, it protects itself. I always say it guards itself. I don't need, to, I'm like just in the current of it. I don't need nothing, could do nothing to this. That's what I'm trying to tell you, that Satan has no power whatsoever. It's, it's the Father even tells Satan to do stuff, um, you know? Turn it off for a minute, my brother. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Break. Break.